What I'm going to tell you about now is one of the most powerful storytelling mechanisms that there is, and that's called the hero's journey. Now to do this, I want you to draw on your imagination and I want you to think of a circle. And it's a circle like an old fashioned clock face where we have 12 o'clock at the top, six o'clock at the bottom, and nine o'clock and three o'clock on either side. And I want you to imagine a line between three o'clock and six o'clock. And this is a formula of types. And that top half of the circle represents the ordinary world, with the bottom half representing the special world. And the way I want to explain this to you is by way of my own hero's journey of writing my first book. And here I am at 12 o'clock, just going about my business. At that stage, I had been a public servant my whole life. I had worked for the government. I was in very secure employment, or so I thought. But I'll get on to what happened to me there that knocked me right off that belief in security. But before I do that, I want to tell you that in 2009, I got a bit of an inkling that there was something more to me, that there was something else I could be doing with my life. And that took me to get some coach training to be able to delve into the potential of people, to be able to do more than they may be doing at any given time. It's the idea of personal growth, essentially. And when I was doing that course, I felt a real spark inside of myself. It was as if I was lighting up. And I got the idea to perhaps move beyond the very safe employment that I'd done my whole life into running a coaching practice. But I pushed that way, way, way out into the future because I told myself a story that I was needing to get my daughter through school first before I would take a risk and not have a regular income. So there I was and I got the idea that writing a book would make a lot of sense because I saw that the coaches who were really successful had written a book where they'd bundled all of their intellectual property into it. And they'd essentially built a bridge between themselves and their clients. So I started to write a book back in 2009. And as far as the hero's journey goes, we call that a call to adventure because that took me out of my comfort zone. I was doing something that I wasn't really comfortable doing, but I started doing it nevertheless. And in terms of the hero's journey, that got me moving beyond my 12 o'clock point. And I was going past one o'clock as I was writing the book and past two o'clock. And I could really imagine that book coming to life so that I could build a coaching practice to help women through the midlife phase. Because at that stage, that was what I was a little bit fired up about. And in terms of the hero's journey, when we get to three o'clock, we get to a threshold of sorts. And at three o'clock, usually we need somebody to step up and help us. They will be a guide or a mentor. It's somebody who's gone before us, somebody who's already solved the problems that we need to be able to solve. And for me, it's interesting to think back on what, what got me to that point. And really what got me to that point was that little voice in my head, that little niggling piece of self-doubt that was saying all sorts of things like, who would want to read a book written by you? You're not an expert. You're not even qualified. And in fact, it was that little voice that really kicked me into taking some more training in coaching. And indeed, the training that I got was invaluable because it was there that I learnt about the hero's journey. And what that showed me was that in fact, I was writing a very dry and very staid book without any stories in it. And really to connect with people, whether we are business people or not, we need to connect with people as people. So that learning about the hero's journey showed me just how important stories are. And indeed, any of my clients who want to humanise their, their book, go through the hero's journey 
either from their own point of view or from their client's point of view. So case studies are incredibly important. But the point is that this piece of learning got me over that threshold. And there was another aspect to it as well, because in terms of the hero's journey, we are ultimately all meant to evolve and grow through our whole life. So I got to see that that little voice in my head cannot be allowed to stop me, should not be something that will stop me. I need to move forward anyway, no matter how uncomfortable it may become. And so there I was on my hero's journey, well beyond the three o'clock point now, going past four o'clock, five o'clock, and at six o'clock, we hit what we call a crisis point or an ordeal. This is the hero's journey language for you. And if I think about a movie that really demonstrates the six o'clock point of the hero's journey well, I think about Star Wars. And I think about Luke Skywalker facing off against Darth Vader. And as he's doing that, he's not only recognising that Darth Vader is his father, but also that that is the dark side of himself that he does not want to own. And for me, the six o'clock point looked like this. On one level, it looked like that I had been stuffing around trying to write a book for five years at that stage. I'd spent over $30,000 in various writing programs and retreats and what have you. I still didn't have a book and I'd just been made redundant. And what that meant was that I wasn't able to play the pattern out that I used to play whenever I got uncomfortable. And that pattern was to just buy another course, to just go on another retreat, to just need one more thing be before I could finish the book. But you know, in fact, that was what was on the surface. What was more important was what was going on underneath the surface. And for me, what that was, what my Darth Vader moment was, was that I had a 40 year history of binge eating disorder. And I was writing a book about how women can prepare themselves to be well during the midlife phase. And I was writing and putting myself through a program of um, deliberately managing your stress, managing your mindset, uh, exercising, making sure you sleep well and making sure that you eat well. But of course, that was the elephant in the room for me. And I had slightly misunderstood what the hero's journey meant to me because I thought that the hero I was meant to be through writing that book was to be saying that with all of the self-care that I practiced on myself before sharing it with you in this book, I thought that that would get me to a point where I wouldn't need to binge anymore where I wouldn't be so uncomfortable in my own skin anymore. And do you know why that was a crisis point was that the, the little voice in my head had also been saying to me, who would want a coach like you? Who would want someone so broken, so disgusting and so hopeless that they can't even control what they put in their mouth? Now, the thing about the six o'clock point is that it will be incredibly painful, but it can be incredibly cathartic as well. And the thing that happened for me at six o'clock when I had nowhere to run and nowhere to hide, no money to buy another course, then the little voice in my head actually changed the tune. And it didn't say, you're too broken, you're too disgusting, you need to solve this problem first so that you can write about it in the past tense. It didn't say that. It said, what if that's not what it's all about? And you know what? With that monkey off my back and the idea that maybe I was worthy of stepping up and sharing what I had to share with the world, with that, I was able to finish the book and I was able to see what it was all about. And what, what it was, was that when I was launching that book and I was standing up on a stage like this, not quite so grand, but a stage like this, and I was able to look at my 14-year-old daughter and her 14-year-old friends and say to those girls that what I want you to know is that there is nothing 
so broken, so unspeakable or so unlovable about you that you can't talk to someone about it and know that they will still love you and remind you to love yourself. And you know, it wasn't just those girls who needed to hear that message. It was the little girl inside of here. And at that very moment, I got another piece of absolute clarity. And what that was all about was that I wasn't put on this earth to help women through menopause. I was put on this earth to help people to get that feeling, that feeling of wholeness, that feeling of self-worth. And with that, I came out the other end a very, very different person. And this is what the hero's journey is all about, is that if we take our challenges on board and if we do the work and if we're prepared to step up, then doors will open up for us. And the person coming beyond the six o'clock point, past seven o'clock and eight o'clock, and back into the ordinary world over the threshold at nine o'clock was not the same person. This person you're hearing from now used to call in sick if they were ever going to be called on to talk at a staff meeting. The person you see now is not stymied by negative beliefs about behavioural, you know, dysfunctional behaviour around their eating patterns or whatever it may be. I don't need to be perfect to be able to help people. And that's the message that I want to give you now as potential authors. I want you to know that you are not doing yourself any favours, but most to the point, you're not doing the people you can help any favours at all if you hold back because your book is not good enough or because you are not good enough. There are editors out there who will fix your book and there are people like me who will put you on a platform like this to be able to spread your message. And the whole point of telling about the hero's journey is to give you two key messages. And one of those is that you need to be able to tell stories. And whether it is the story of the person who is reading the book or not, whether it is the story of the clients who you have helped, or whether it is the story about what got you to where you are now, the ability to tell a story is incredibly important. And most to the point, any of those barriers that you'll be hitting as you go through the journey of writing your book are not there to stop you. They are not there to prove to you that you are not good enough. They are there to prove to you that you will become the person you need to be by pushing through them. So I really want to encourage you to take the idea of the hero's journey on board, to go onto YouTube. And if you put in the browser there, the words hero's journey, a four minute TED Ed video will come up. And I really want you to work on the ability to tell a story and to include that in your book to build your business.